This is a video introduction to the PPAT Task 2. Now before I really dig into what content uh, is involved in Task 2, I want to put you into a specific mindset. And this is the mindset of the pre-test and post-test. Now this is often used in uh, the scientific method in medical trials. And the basic idea is that your design is going to involve obtaining a pretest measure of an outcome of interest prior to administering some treatment, followed by a post test on the same measure after treatment occurs. And I want you to think about this in terms of your classroom. You are going to have uh, national state standards that you are teaching in your classes. What this task is going to have you do is develop an assessment. But before you can develop an assessment, you need to find baseline data. And you can get baseline data of whether your students know a concept, you know, through your cooperating teacher, or you can administer a pretest and then have specific data on that concept. Then you can teach the concept and then develop your assessment of that concept and then give the post test. And then you can compare the pretest and the post test information in order to see if the learning outcomes were achieved. So get into that mindset as we go along. In task two, you will demonstrate your understanding, analysis, and application of assessment and data collection to measure and inform student learning. Now task two specifically measures knowledge of these in-task standards listed on the screen. The slides will be available for you to download and review, so I'm not going to go over all of these standards. Now while the content of task two is laid out very similarly to task one, I have added in some additional information that I don't believe is presented up front to you and you are going to need that information for later parts of this assessment. First, you're going to have to provide contextual information. Then you will have a written commentary. This written commentary will have to be a little bit longer than task one, but it's still about seven typed pages. Uh, the total is 22,500 characters. Remember, that's every letter, punctuation, and space. This commentary is made up of your response to individual activities that you create and then you're given guided prompts. Those activities are developing an assessment and there are actually three parts to this activity. So you're going to select a single assessment, prepare the learners for the assessment, and, and identify two focused students that you are going to be doing more work with. The next activity is actually administering and analyzing the assessment. And then finally, the last activity is reflecting on your assessment. During these tasks, you are going to have to identify two focus students who reflect different learning needs. And then you are going to be writing specifically about those two focus students. There are eight artifacts to which I will return at the end of this video. Before you begin entering any of the information in task two that is graded, you actually have to input some ungraded information. And that is contextual information about the place where you are teaching. So your response is going to be limited to 1500 characters, which is about one half of a typed page. In that um, discussion, you need to describe your classroom, include the grade level, content area, subject matter, and number of students. Provide relevant information about any of your students with special needs. Describe any physical, social, behavioral, or developmental factors that may impact the instruction that occurs in your classroom. Mention any linguistic, cultural, or health considerations that may also impact teaching and learning in your classroom. And finally, you're going to describe any factors related to the school and the surrounding community that may impact the teaching and learning that occurs in your classroom. Now, the good thing is you already have this information and you gathered it during task one when you filled out that contextual factors chart. So now you just need to take the things that you listed in your chart and turn it into paragraph form. Now, if you have switched locations, 
I suggest filling out another contextual factors chart for your new location before you start writing the contextual factors paragraph for task two. The first activity for task two is to develop an assessment. And there are three parts of it. The first is selecting the assessment. So your assessment, you know, a test, a quiz, um, you're grading a written prompt, a performance, something like that. Your assessment has to assess a state and or a national standard or standards. It has to assess learning goals for the lesson. So you're going to develop your, um, your learning outcomes. It has to include a rubric or scoring guide. How are you going to grade this assessment? And it must be able to produce quantitative or qualitative data to be used for analysis. Now I've created these hints for the future because right now you can, you may start working on the materials for task two and leave out important things that you are actually asked to comment on later. So here are my three tips for you. You need to figure out how you are going to collect baseline data because you will need to compare your assessment to baseline data. And that's where the idea of the pretest comes in. You will need graphic representation of your data. So no matter what your assessment is, you need to be able to show a spreadsheet a pie chart, you know, some other chart or table that represents your data. And you need to involve students in analyzing their own assessment. Now, the guiding prompts for this activity are provide an in-depth description of the assessment, provide a rationale for choosing or designing the assessment based on its alignment with the standards and learning goals that meet the student's needs, what data did you use to establish a baseline for student growth related to this lesson's learning goals? So see if you had just dug in and created your single assessment and then you started to write about your assessment and you didn't have baseline data, you'd be, you'd be in trouble right now. So make sure you're following those hints for the future. Describe the rubric or scoring guide that you have selected or designed. How does it align to your learning goals? How will you communicate its use to your students? So you want your students to know how they will be graded. What evidence of student learning do you plan to collect from the assessment? How will you collect the data? Provide a rationale for your data collection process. Will it be uh, test scores, quiz scores? What type of data are you going to collect? And make sure that that data can be represented in a graphic form. The next part of this activity is to prepare the learners for assessment. And your guided prompts are, what learning activities and student groupings will you use during the assessment? Provide a rationale for your choices. What materials, resources, and technology will you use to administer the assessment? provide a rationale for your choices. And then I add in other considerations back to those hints. Where will you get your baseline data for comparison? How can you graphically represent your results? And how will students be involved in their own assessment? And the third part of this task developing an assessment is to find your focus students. So you're going to choose and describe two focus students who reflect different learning needs and for whom you will need to modify the assessment. Provide a rationale for selecting each of the students. Refer to them as focus student one and focus student two as you respond to the guiding prompts. What data did you use to establish a baseline for growth for these two focus students? Based on their specific learning needs, how will you modify the assessment for each of the two focus students? Provide a rationale for your decision. And if you already have figured out how you're going to collect your, your baseline data um, from the whole class, that's the same way that you can collect it from those two focus students. The next activity is to administer and analyze the assessment. And you're going to have different writing prompts as to whether you are completing this activity for the general class or for your focus students. So for your general class, the guiding prompts are, based on your baseline data and the data shown in your graphic representation, analyze the assessment data to determine your students' progress towards the learning goals. 
And this can be easily done if your baseline data is also in graphic form. Then you can just compare the two graphics. How efficient was the data collection process that you selected? Cite examples to support your analysis. Describe how you engage students in analyzing their own assessment results to help them understand their progress toward the learning goals. So remember that you want to be involving students in the assessment. Now they can, you know, peer review, self-assess, or um, they can reflect upon the assessment that you return to them. Then you'll do the same thing, but for your focus students. So the guiding prompts for administering and analyzing the assessment for your focus students are, what did you learn overall about the progress of each of the two focus students toward achieving the learning goal or goals? Cite evidence from each of the two focus students completed assessment and any other related data to support your analysis. Based on the assessment data, both baseline and graphic, what impact did your modifications of the assessment have on the demonstration of learning from each of the two focus students? Cite examples to support your analysis. Describe how you engaged each of the two focus students in analyzing their own assessment results to help understand progress made toward the learning goal. And then the final activity is reflecting on the assessment. And you're gonna do this for both the whole class and the focus students. So your guided prompts for the focus students are, choose one successful aspect of the assessment for either focus student. Provide a rationale for your choice. How will your data analysis inform or guide future instruction for each of the two focus students? What modifications would you make to the assessment for future use for each of the two focus students? Provide a rationale. And then your guiding prompts for this activity for the whole class are, how will your data analysis inform or guide future instruction for the whole class? What modifications to the data collection process would you make for future use? Provide a rationale. What modifications to the assessment would you make for future use? Provide a rationale. In what ways would an assessment that is different from the type used in this task allow students to further demonstrate their achievement of the learning goal or goals? So the whole idea of task two is to get you to determine where your students are along their path towards a learning goal to, uh, and that determin uh, determination of kind of where they are right now at this point of time, that's your pretest. Then you teach the topic and then you are assessing how they did in learning that topic. And then by reflecting and working through task two, you're able to determine was your method of teaching successful? What do you need to change about your teaching and the way that you are assessing to be successful? And so this, this should be the way that you are um, teaching all of the time. Where are my students at right now? Okay, I'm teaching them. Okay, here's my assessment. Did they learn what they were supposed to learn? What can I do in order to change the class environment, change the way that I teach that concept, change the way that I administer it to specific students who may need um, just different needs? So let's return to that uh, first slide that had all the content of task two and look at these artifacts. So you need eight artifacts. You need representative pages of the selected assessment. So you just need to show them what is the assessment tool that you're giving. Maybe it's a test, maybe it's a quiz. You need representative pages of the baseline data for the whole class. So see what I said at the very beginning, be thinking about how you can collect that baseline data because you need to submit it as an artifact and you need to be reflecting on it and comparing your data to that baseline data. A representative page of the rubric or scoring guide that you're going to use for the assessment. A representative page of the baseline data for both focus student one and focus student two. Representative pages of a graphic representation of the collected data. So like I said, it could be a spreadsheet, a pie chart, a table, some kind of graphic. A completed assessment from both focus student one and focus student two. So you will need to submit the actual assessment tool that you used for each of those students. 
So that is the PPAT task two, content and general description of each activity and artifact that you need to submit.